with another uh, video here. This time I'm going to be doing an overview on overclocking. Just a guide for a quick overclock for the MSI Gaming X RX480. So the MSI Gaming X, in my opinion, is still the quietest. It's the best, most refined, although the looks are subjective in terms of these custom cooled cards. Um, so I, I just want to go over a quick how to set it up so that it's overclocked where it matches the Nitro Plus in terms of performance while remaining a lot quieter. In addition to that, I have overclocked the memory, um, but overclocking the memory, just like overclocking all graphics cards in general, uh, your mileage may vary. Um, I managed to get 2225, which is effectively, what, 8.9 gigahertz uh, overclock, so that instead of the default 8 gigahertz, I get 8.9. Um, if you get 9, which is the maximum you can go, which is 2250, um, then that's really good. Mine could do that, but I would see some flickering, uh, and I would need to bump the power limit up a little bit uh, in order to do that. So if I, if I, maybe if I did a plus 50%, I could probably do the 2250, but I don't want that much power consumption. Um, and this this overclock is kind of like a kind of like one of those quick and dirty overclocks. You set it, and then it works because it's not going for an extreme clock like 1400. Um, I may do another video in the future on that, but this is just for those who want to set up the card to be quiet as a daily driver, perform really good out of the box, and when playing games, it performs better than your out of the box settings. So basically what we're doing is we're gonna set the memory, find out what your stable memory clock is by playing around with this slider, running a benchmark, and looking for little squares or white specks or spots or weird issues that show up on the screen that would indicate that you have an unstable memory overclock. So I would do the memory first because it's pretty easy to do. Uh, or you don't need to overclock it at all if you don't really want to overclock the memory. Uh, it, it does vary. Um, so next, moving on to the core, you may notice that there's also the fan profile and the temperature. So what I've also done is I have custom, I, I have raised the temperature limit. So for the Gaming X, the default temperature limit or target temperature is 73C. Uh, so I raised mine to 85 because I want it to be quieter, even more quieter while increasing the boost clock. Um, so what the way I do that is I allow for a higher temperature because I already know from using the reference card uh, that the, the card can handle degrees in the 80s. Um, and the thing is the MSI, keep in mind the MSI Gaming X is a much better cooler. There's a lot more thermal mass. There's a lot more aluminum compared to the the one found on the reference cooler so and already testing this 85c it never gets to 85c the only way we get to 85c is if i increase the power limit to plus 50 and try to go for an extreme overclock like 1400 and see if i can do that uh, with some voltage with some minor voltage tweaking um, but for for an everyday stable overclock uh, we're going to go for in this video we're just going to go for a moderate one so what i would suggest doing first is set your target temperature to 85. So change it from 70, set it to manual, and set it to 85. Uh, increase the power limit to either plus 10, like mine, or plus 20. Uh, it, it really depends. Or you could leave it on zero and see if your card has enough uh, headroom, like you can actually see it hit the boost clock, uh, the state seven boost clock. Uh, but from my testing, I don't really see it. So if I do 1340, it won't do it without a, a plus 10% on the power limit. Uh, for the fan profile, uh, the default, I believe, is uh, 2000, 2200, I believe, or 2400. But anyway, yeah, I think it's 2400. Uh, I set that to 1500. I don't want it to go... What this means is I don't want the fans to spin above 1500 RPM. So that will constrain the fans to not make a lot of noise. That's just because I can't stand anything above 1500. Anything over 1500, I consider it too noisy. Um, so to me, it has in order for it to overclock, it has to stay within 1500 as the maximum speed. The target temperature 85, because I don't want it to be thermal throttling. Uh, once it hits 90 C, it's going to start thermal throttling. So that then what will happen is it'll, it'll start dropping back to what, these lower states like state 4 and 5, and or even state 3. I don't even want it to do that. So... Uh, what I would do is I would set it to 85, set it to 1500 RPM, raise the power limit to 10 or 20, depending on which one you want to do. And then I would change the default, which is actually uh, 1303. 
1305, they round it on Wattman, but 1303 is the out of the box. So this is what it would look like out of the box. I would first set it to 1330 and apply that. And that would run a benchmark like Unigen Heaven or Valley or whatever. If you're testing the memory, run Valley uh, to test memory. If you're testing the core clock, use uh, Unigen Heaven or uh, what I like to use is the Final Fantasy 14, the MMO. I would use the Heaven Sword benchmark because that's a really good benchmark to stress test the GPU in, in like a game type of setting. So I definitely recommend that one. That one has shown me, like even in, in overclocks where I thought I was stable because it can pass uh, Heaven, I would fail in one of the scenes in Final Fantasy 14. So I definitely recommend the Final Fantasy 14 benchmark uh, as a really good real world uh, test for your overclock. So assuming that it can do 1330 with either 0% on power limit or 10% on power limit, then I would say you could go up to 1340. Um, and then the reason why I'm using 1330 and 1340, so I'll explain that here. 1330 is the overclock mode for the ASUS Strix. It is also the out of box factory overclock for the power color red devil. So since I know that those cards from those manufacturers already come out of the factory with this boost clock, the MSI, there's no reason why the MSI Gaming X shouldn't be able to also achieve this while maintaining a really good noise profile um, and a target temperature. So that's why I would suggest testing first with 1330 then i would bump it to 1340 the reason why we go to 1340 is because i know that the sapphire nitro plus runs at 1342 so if that one can do it although that one's really loud because of that um you should be able to do it on the msi as well so i would do this this is probably a good everyday out of the box settings like this this way if you set it like what i have here um, you could even raise the power limit to probably plus 15 or plus 20. I would not suggest going to plus 50. If you go to plus 50 and the card just for whatever reason wants to use all that extra juice, all the extra power, then what you'll see happening is your your temperature will go way up. It'll it'll get it'll cl get it'll close in on 85, and I don't really want it to do that um, because I've constrained it to 1500 RPM. So the only way you'd be able to to not let it go to 85 is to increase is increase the, the fan profile and I don't want to I'm not someone who wants to compromise on my noise profile I like my cards really quiet and I like them overclocked as well so this is a very good out of the box kind of quick and dirty overclock so go ahead and try these settings like I said your mileage may vary especially on the VRAM uh, because the VRAM is already specced really high 2000 megahertz this, this VRAM from Samsung is probably like the best GDDR5 on the market. It's the same VRAM that the, the GTX 1060 and the 1070 use. Um, and I think that MSI compared to the other vendors, I believe MSI actually has slightly better binned Samsung, Samsung chips. I can't really prove that. All I do know is that the, uh, the MSI gaming app does factory overclock the VRAM to 8100 so that which would be like 20 25 so it's a slight little boost there so i mean if they are factory overclocking the memory and no one else is doing that i figure that the msi has some pretty good vram on there so anyway guys go ahead and try these settings let me know if they work depending on your card you may need depending on your asic quality you may need to increase your power limit to hit 1340 uh, more easily and then you may have to also uh, increase your noise on the card as well like bump this up to maybe 1800 rpm or something but anyway let me know if this works for you uh if it does what i would suggest and you want to go higher uh if you really want to see where your max overclock is uh set your power limit to plus 50 and set this to 1360 and see if it runs at 1360 um and definitely you'd have to increase your fan profile at that point and, and keep your target temperature at 85 um, I would probably go for 1800 RPM, 85 target temp, plus 50, and then 1360 and see what happens. Uh, if it does work, then you could try 1370. Basically, what I suggest doing is bumping this up in 10 megahertz intervals. So if 1350 works, you may go for 1360. If 1360 works, go for 1370. And then you just keep going until the computer crashes. Or becomes unstable i mean that's that's pretty much how overclocking graphics cards has always worked um, you can look up other guides um, 
but like I said, I want my car to be quiet and I want it to perform at least as good, if not better, than the Sapphire Nitro Plus while being quiet or while doing it. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Let me know how it goes with your overclocking. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.